Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This will be a short but very interesting one. Today I'll show you how you can scrape any website and analyze and summarize the scraped data to then be used by another LLM to craft highly personalized emails which get you great responses. Before I'll show you how you can replicate this, I'll first show you how it works by using a test example. So for the test, I've just found a random website on LinkedIn, myoprocess.com. I'll quickly show you their website. They are a automated leads agency, which is coincidentally something very similar to what I do. Test the workflow. As you can see, the workflow executed successfully. I'll quickly go over the output and then I'll show you how you can set this up yourself. So it's created the website and on the right side here, you can read about the output. I won't go over everything, but you can see it gave me the main source of their revenue, which is exactly what I asked of it. It gave me their customer pain points, their resource waste, everything, very concise. And then for the other one, I asked it to retrieve any relevant case studies, success stories, or testimonials. And you can see that there were some, and it actually did. And you can read about it by pausing the video. Before I get into how you can set this up, I want to talk quickly about lead enrichment. So let's say you've scraped a lot of leads from LinkedIn or another website, a Facebook group, whatever. You know very little about that person. You may know their first name, their last name, their LinkedIn page, and maybe their company website. But of course, if you want a highly personalized email, you need to know a lot more than that. So you can use this system to enrich yourself, getting all their data, and then craft a highly personalized email, which they will actually read and respond to because they'll think you've done your research and you know what you're talking about. Now that you've seen it, how it works and that it can actually be useful for any B2B business, I'll show, show you how you can set this up. So this is the first time I'm talking about a HTTP node. An HTTP node can be used to access an API or a lot of things, but in this case, it's simply used to fetch a website and get me the HTML. So the only thing you need is to set it on get and then enter the URL of the website you want to get scraped. And on the right side, you can see the output. It's just a lot of coding, unnecessary HTML, all the things which are unrelevant for the things we want to ask from it. So that's why it's important to set up the next node. The next node is a code node. And then I've written some code <laughs> to save you the time and the trouble. You can just copy it by yeah, simply typing it over on a notepad or whatever and getting it in. I'll quickly explain what it does. So it takes the input, it looks for all the HTML code and it replaces it by null, these two apost apostrophes. So it just cleans the HTML and it only re uh, returns the text. So on the left side, we can see what we got as output from the HTML node, HTTP node, excuse me. And then we've parsed it through with this code. And then on the right side, you can see it only outputs text. And most of it, like 90% of it, is just what was on the website and which is actually relevant for the next nodes. So now we're on to the two large language model nodes. For both in both instances, I chose for ChatGPT because I think it does an amazing job. So I've asked the LLM to analyze the input and summarize the main revenue generating activities of the website that we scraped. Yeah, that's because I have a inbound and outbound sales automation agency. So it's actually a relevant use case for me. I'll quickly go over the prompt and I'll let you know why I structure the prompt in this way. So firstly, uh, as a role, we chose system because this is just what we're telling it. We're giving it the context of in which the, the LLM is performing. And I've told it you're an expert business analyst specializing in identifying key revenue drivers for companies based on their website content. Website content is just the input in this case. And the task I've given is analyze the data to identify how the company generates revenue by addressing the following. What are products or services are our main source of revenue? What pricing models are used? What customer pain points are solved? Leading the pros, purchases or conversions? Which features or services seem to drive the most value or are more emphasized in customer testimonials and case studies? What calls to action or conversion points are used to generate revenue? And then to conclude, based on these insights, summarize and output only the company's revenue generating value proposition in a clear and concise way, because that's all we want. And then of course we need to tell it what the actual input is it needs to analyze. We do that here. 
you can see it's a JSON. How we get this JSON is simply putting the output from the previous node from the left side, putting it here and putting it on expression because the input we're giving the node can be variable. And then I already went over it or already showed you when at the end of the example, but this is the output it gave. You can see what it does and how it answered all our questions here. Customer pain points, number two. Oh, you're driving features and emphasis. Exactly what we'll ask you to do here. And if you read through it carefully, you can see that it only outputted the revenue generating value proposition. So for the last note, I think it's also very interesting if you write an email to someone which is actually a relevant email. So you base it upon a recent case study or a recent success story or recent testimonials to show the person you're contacting, you have a grasp of their industry, a grasp of their business, and you are actually, they actually know what you're talking about. So as you can read here, I've asked this large language model to retrieve case studies, success stories, or testimonials. Uh, and I'll go over the prompt again. Same setup system where I just give it a context of what it is, then the task, and then lastly, the input, which it needs to analyze and summarize for me. So you're an expert in extracting factual information, analyze the provided text from a company's website and identify any success stories, case studies, or testimonials mentioned. If success stories, case studies, or testimonials are mentioned, extract them. But there is, of course, also the possibility that there aren't any, that it's just a very basic website without any of those. And in that case, we also wanted to give an output and not an error. That's why I've asked it that if there are no success stories or whatever, it outputs null, which gives us some useful information. And let's say we use a third node to write a personalized email. We can just say it has gotten the main revenue generating activities, but it hasn't gotten any case studies. So it will just base that personalized email on what we have and not on what we don't have. And it won't imagine anything. And same goes for this node that is did for the last one. We just used the uh, input from the HTML node. So once again, just from instead of the last one or the one before plain text, put it in, it automatically puts itself in curly brackets. And then on the right side, we have the desired output, as you can see, read through it carefully, put it on pause and just refer back to what I just said. If there weren't any case studies or whatever, this, the content would be output null, same as this. And then the, the third node or whatever you're going to put this information knows that there isn't something to work with and they'll skip over this. As I said before, the output of both, both of these LM nodes can then be put into a third node, for example, to craft a highly personalized email. It could also be updated to your CRM to complete a actual profile of any leads that can be used in the future. And there are many ways how you can use this, but it's just important to note that let's say you get a lead and you want to contact them, please use something like this to enrich the lead, give yourself more information. So you actually have something with them to talk about something relevant that they'll also be more likely to get back to you. As I said, it was quick, but interesting. I hope that this workflow inspires you to go on and implement this in whatever you can imagine. You can make it as elaborate as you want. As I already mentioned before, this is just a snippet of how this works. If you are stuck on any workflow or need help with extra information about nodes or how to set certain things up, or you just want to talk about the feas feasibility of an idea you have in the description below, there's a link to a free consultation with me for 30 minutes. As I said, it's free. You can ask your questions. I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. And I'm pretty sure I can help you with whatever you're struggling with. I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through the end. Um, if you have any suggestions on workflows you want me to talk about or things that you would like to implement in your business and you think I could give you some useful information, please leave it in the comments uh, down below. I'll be sure to read all of them and respond to all of them. Then all that rests for me is to thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you guys on the next one.